In this video, we use our laser machine to create this cool looking fantasy axe. Stay tuned until the end of the video when we put it to the test. For this project, we opted to make an axe. Nothing historically accurate by any means, but maybe something Gimli the Dwarf might have used. <laughs> Since we'll be making this out of flat pieces of wood cut on a laser, this presented some additional challenges that we really hadn't run into before. Namely, we wanted the handle to be rounded, so to do this, we created a bunch of oval pieces that would get stacked or slid over a central shaft. You'll see how this works a little later. The two-dimensional shapes you see are from CorelDRAW, which is the program we use to send jobs to our laser. The entire axe was designed to use quarter-inch material. In this case, I'm lasering out quarter-inch MDF. MDF is nice because it's extremely cheap, easy to laser, and lays flat because it's a completely manufactured product. So no warping if it's stored correctly. I threw some masking onto both sides of the MDF to keep the surfaces clean. It's not completely necessary since I'm going to paint this later, but it just makes gluing and painting, well, just working with it a little bit easier. You can see here that the double-sided blade is two pieces. That's because the axe was designed to fit on a smaller laser bed. The blade is the largest piece measuring approximately 9.5 by 15.6 inches. So this should be cuttable on a lot of lasers out there. There will be a link to the file we use in the description below. All the engraved pieces that you see here were grouped together on the sheet. This has the benefit of allowing the laser to move the shortest distance with each pass greatly increasing its speed. Having the pieces masked like this will also reveal a very clean contrasting engraving later. Since I was thinking Middle Earth Dwarf would use this axe, I added some runes. In case you're wondering, yes, each set of runes does spell something, and no, I'm not telling you what they mean. It's just whatever stupid thing came to mind at the time. Since I planned on painting the axe, Sealing the MDF prior to painting is pretty important. Before I can do that though, all this mask needs to be peeled off. It takes a little while to do, but the results are worth it in my opinion. Here's a tip if you ever mask your wood like this. Peel one piece of the mask off and then use the tacky side of that piece to start peeling the next piece and then keep repeating this process. Uniform sized pieces in particular can be peeled a lot faster this way. The reason why I'm sealing these pieces is to keep the surface from getting all rough and bumpy that happens when the fibers rise up from the painting. You will get a little of this roughness with sealing, but not that much. I'm only going to put one coat on, but for the best finish, I'd normally use two coats with some light sanding in between. I'm using Minwax brand because that's what was available at the hardware store, so I'm sure there's other brands available that would work fine too. I'm also using a cheap foam brush, which gets the job done. Plus, I can probably get a few more uses out of it since the sealer is water-based, making cleanup easy. I had some old generic silver spray paint laying around, so I used that on the axe blades to save some time. I used acrylics on the rest of the axe. I tried a darker silver for the recessed area of the engravings. Because the laser left a slightly bumpy surface, I thought it gave it a nice effect. I used a lighter silver that closely matched the spray paint used on the axe blades to do the raised areas. Someone with better eyesight and more patience probably could have done a better job, but I think it came out okay. Plus, I plan to sort of dirty everything up a little later, so I figured that would help hide small mistakes. In hindsight, if I had lasered either a little slower or run a second pass on the engravings, I'd have had more depth, which would have made painting easier too. Now comes the mind-numbing part of gluing everything together. Most everything here is layers and layers of the same or similar shapes. The axe is broken down somewhat into sub-assemblies so they can each be worked on separately. I'm using wood glue for most of these parts. It works really well in MDF and dries reasonably fast. 
I'm removing the excess glue from the edges, but I don't have to worry too much about this because I plan on giving them a quick sanding anyway before painting. I want to sand the edges because as careful as I am, my alignment during gluing can be off ever so slightly. Also, the trouble with cutting thicker pieces in the laser is that you get a very slight bevel on the edges. I'm not going to go into the technical reasons for that here, but suffice to say that when the pieces are stacked, you can really feel and even see the layers. A little sanding along most of the edges clean up that layered look a bit. I'm also sanding the edges to make sliding on the oval pieces that form the shaft here a little easier. You can see that I marked where the axe blades would go so I knew where to apply glue. I just quickly traced around one of the blades with a pen, but this could also have been marked with the laser at the time of cutting. I'm clamping the blade with binder clips to make sure that everything stays aligned while it dries. Preparing the handle to slide on and stack all those oval pieces. The pieces fit a little too perfect, and with any irregularities from gluing the layers together, a little sanding just makes this process easier. I'm wiping off any major excess glue, but the handle will be wrapped later, so any that's showing isn't a big deal. Now to just finish painting the edges of all the sub-assemblies. You can still see the layers a bit through the paint, but I'm okay with it. If you're really going for a perfectly smooth finish, 
then squeegeeing some kind of filler along all the sides and sanding would take care of it. I thought the parts of the handle that wouldn't be wrapped would look a little better, kind of more finished. So I went over them with some brown paint. I thought everything looked a little too clean, so I, I gave everything a quick wash with a watered down uh, black paint. It went on heavy and then just wiped most of it off. You can't really screw this part up. Finally all the sub-assemblies were ready to glue together. I could have used more wood glue, but I opted to use E6000 craft glue, which I think is a little stronger. All the pieces slid together nicely. This is probably the most satisfying part of the build. I wrapped the handle in a fabric ribbon. I think this is readily available, but we'll include a link where we got it in the description below. I used a glue gun to speed things up a bit. I wasn't thrilled with the way the wrapping looked on the end of the handle, so I decided to cover it by wrapping another color ribbon around the top and bottom, which I thought also made it a little more interesting. I threw that same watered down black paint on the wrapped handle to weather it and make it look used. All done, and now for a quick test. Thanks for watching. 
let us know in the comments what you think and if you've ever thought about doing a project like this. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more fantasy-related projects coming soon. Stay tuned.